I'm honored that a knight such hey, as you lad. takes an interest in Don't you want a little yeah. wager on the rat age, I know this is your favorite. I have to make a video. Over four years ago, as of the release of this video, Kingdom Come Deliverance was released to the world and saw over a million copies sold in the first month. Pretty good by modern standards. Over the next two years, it saw well over two million more sales. So, why am I making a video about it now? Well, it seems, or at least feels like, I was purchaser three million and one. And I'm a little mad about it. So you just, like, really like the game and want to say so now that you've played it finally? You say, probably. Well, yes, but I wouldn't recommend it. Huh? You spout back, I'm guessing. So let's get into why I'm sitting here writing a love letter to a game I wouldn't recommend. With an 8 out of 10 from IGN, a 4 out of 5 from GOG, and 76% from Metacritic, you'd assume it's probably just a decent game overall. But you'd be very wrong. I think this game is a masterpiece of a very specific kind. It is the current pinnacle of a very specific kind of gameplay, and it knows it. It insists upon you enjoying it for what it is, and if you don't like that, you don't like that. In Deliverance, you play as Henry of Scalitz in Bohemia, year 1403. Here's your first hint at my overarching point. You have no say in this. There's no character customization, you can't choose your name, your gender, your face, your background, anything. Well, aside from a couple of meager skill boosts to start off with, but that's hardly important. And no, I know this isn't a novel approach for a game to take, but it is a little unusual for an open world game like this. I say this allows the developers to really dive into and cater to the character. Side quests, interactions with NPCs, dialogue, so much is enriched by this restriction. Everything is tailored to this very specific character you play as, and this creates all the more room for immersion. However, that is coming from the perspective of a straight white guy playing a straight white guy in a video game. So, take that for what you think it's worth. But Henry isn't very good at much to begin with. He's a lazy and very casual son of a talented blacksmith just coasting his way through life. Which is a great way to explain away your low stats and abilities at the start of the game. Because you kind of suck at most things at the beginning of the game, you might be tempted to save pretty often to ensure you make the right decisions, you pass speech checks, you win fights, and so on. But the game doesn't want you to. You see, there are only a few ways for your progress to be saved in Deliverance. First, you can save and quit at any point. But when you do so, the game closes. Entirely. Second, you can sleep in a bed you own or you're renting, which you'll probably have to do somewhat often. Or finally, you can drink an incredibly expensive beverage known as Savior Schnapps, which allows you to save at any point and keep playing. They aren't incredibly difficult to come by, but when it costs you the equivalent of 50 to 100 nights at an inn, or a fancy new pair of pants, or a full repair of a decent piece of armor, you'll think twice about using such a precious resource willy-nilly. And I think that's very intentional. The game definitely wants to be played a certain way. It wants you to fail now and then. It wants you to be taken to jail for stealing if you get caught a couple times. It wants you to have to find another way to accomplish your goal if you fail a speech check of some kind. It wants you to have to surrender to live to fight another day a couple of times. It's tough. You're strongly encouraged and oftentimes forced not to just save before every interaction to ensure you 100% succeed in everything you do like you might do in Skyrim or Fallout. I mean, you can play that way if you're willing to close the game, relaunch it, and reload your save every time, but who the f wants to do that? The game also saves at important points and quests for you, but unless you're willing to backtrack a good 45 minutes sometimes, or you happen to down a save your schnapps recently, it's saving your mistakes too. And oh, the mistakes you can make. This game does not hold your hand at any point. If you're to convince somebody to see something your way, you might not be capable of doing so with your current skills and stats. Perhaps instead you could disguise yourself as someone in their group, but the game won't tell you that's an option. 
perhaps you can put something in their food, knock them out, corner them, and give them a life or death ultimatum. But the game won't tell you that's an option. I mean, sometimes it will tell you that you have alternative options, especially if you have definitely tried everything else already. But for the most part, you're allowed to be as creative as you'd like to solve most of the problems put before you. But the game doesn't tell you that. Not very explicitly, anyway. Of course, it's not Dungeons & Dragons. There aren't literally infinite possibilities. It is a video game with code. But thus far, I've found there are almost always more options than I expected there to be. And I'm sure, in the time I've spent in this game, I have missed dozens of potentialities. I certainly haven't completed every quest in the game thus far, but I can pretty confidently say that almost every quest has multiple outcomes. Even if the difference is just the quest giver's disposition toward you at the end of the quest. Sometimes you miss an important detail and the quest takes longer because now you have to figure out what that detail would have told you another way. Sometimes you go the extra mile and you sneakily light the enemy camp's barrels full of arrows on fire and now when you assault the camp later, the enemy archers will quickly run out of arrows. You can be the bad guy. You can lockpick, pickpocket, sneak and stealth, intimidate, harass, and murder your way to victory for a lot of quests. Alternatively, you can be a paragon of justice, or at least justice as defined by the year 1403 Bohemia. Never lying, only killing when absolutely necessary for survival, allowing enemies to flee with their lives once defeated, giving alms to the poor and donations to the church, behaving righteously in everything you do. You even have the option to turn down quests that would have you do something untoward, such as grave robbing or pickpocketing. Or sometimes if you do take those quests on, but one thing leads to another and you decide, actually, I don't want to do this messed up thing, you often have a way of going around it. The man who asks you to go pickpocket his money back off the guard that took it from him, you can just give him the money. He might call you out, knowing that you didn't actually pickpocket the guard, but it'll complete the quest. Of course, most people will probably play somewhere in the middle of all these options, and that works perfectly well too. But it's not just choices and preparation, it's map markers, it's directions, it's deciphering instructions. When somebody tells you to follow the stream north and hang left, the quest will give you a general perimeter in which you'll find your goal, but it's genuinely best to remember and follow those instructions to more easily find what they're leading you to. Sometimes the game doesn't even give you a marker or a perimeter to search. Sometimes you'll get a set of instructions and have to follow them to the best of your ability, and the game will tell you step by step if you are in fact following them correctly. Sometimes. <laughs> Other times, you really just have to figure it out entirely on your own. One of my favorite examples of this is when during a side quest, you are given the written testimony of a heretic captured and tortured by the church. Real period appropriate. Well, the heretic spoke in very biblical terms, following the sun in the morning, beholding queens and hearing the labor of thousands. You have to figure out. That means heading east of the village you're in, then following several beehives. Brilliant game design, in my opinion. Uh, over the top and unnecessary and annoying to others. This is all to say, thus far, that what you do, when you do it, and how you do it quite often actually matters to an extent. Again, to some, this will be infuriating. If you're the kind of gamer that likes to be the perfect completionist hero, you're either going to have a grand time following online guides meticulously, step by step, or you're going to hate this game for being so difficult and tedious. Though I disagree, some might even just call it poor open world game design. For what it's worth though, the number of quests to be found is also pretty manageable. You'll constantly have the main quest line to progress as you'd like, but side quests you have to seek out a bit more, or unlock as you progress through the main quests. The game doesn't really Fallout or Skyrim you, giving you 2-3 to three main story quests and 8-12 to 12 side quests at any given moment. For me, I typically have the main quest and maybe 2 or 3 side quests, often in the general area I need to be for the main story quest anyway. The side quests are all really interesting too. As pressing as the main story often is, I find myself often struggling to get back to it just a little. We aren't talking about your typical fetch or kill quests. Those are in the game, but they're labeled separately as activities. Thus far, 
Every side quest I've experienced is a genuinely unique and interesting aside from the main story. In fact, sometimes they're related to the main story and completing them can grant certain benefits in the main story. While on the subject, the main story is definitely a little cliche, even though the game's been out for four years, I won't spoil it. But it's a little bit predictable, usually, sometimes. But there are a few interesting subplots and twists in there to give it a little more charm. So overall, I know I've come across as pretty positive thus far, but I will throw in a few reservations of my own as well. Sometimes the game does take this overarching theme I've been getting at a little bit far. For instance, a bit ago I completed a side quest which involved scoping out several locations in near proximity to each other. All but one were optional. I decided to start with one of the optional locations, as it was the first I came upon, then moved on to the main location figuring I could hit the other optional stops afterward. But I couldn't. Visiting the primary location triggered the next phase of the quest, which then removed the markers for the other optional objectives. The order in which you do things matters. Sometimes a little too much. Granted, in the dialogue when Henry is reporting back to the quest-giving character, uh, he does explain that no, I didn't hit all of these locations, but here's why. So, it throws you a bone. Not to mention the ride there and back. I rode from the southern end to the northwestern end of the map for this quest, then had to ride back to the southern end to report on my findings, which were now incomplete. This just isn't fun sometimes. The game does try to keep all of this back and forth, that's a little too frequent, interesting with random encounters, traps, ambushes, bandits, merchants, wayfarers, etc, but uh, there are only so many of these random encounters baked into the game. There are a few unique ones, but whether you're fast traveling or riding on your own, Time matters, and it can get a bit tedious having to keep your character well rested, fed, and bathed for the sake of your stats and appearance through all this. Have I mentioned that yet? You get dirty. You gotta wash yourself to come off as presentable, especially to nobles. And all of your equipment deteriorates in condition with use. It's easy enough to get it fixed, but not every village has a tailor that can mend your torn pants or an armorer that can repair your battered gauntlets. You can repair things yourself with the right kits, you can take perks to reduce your need to eat and sleep. Uh, there are a lot of ways around this sort of stuff, but it is ever present, and if not kept up with, it will affect your stats and make encounters a bit more difficult. Again, I love this over-the-top, sort of micromanagey, over-immersive crap, but I feel I could turn a lot of people off from the game. The skill ceiling for combat is also quite high, and you really do have to pick your battles, especially in the early to mid-game. Remember how Henry kind of sucks at most things to begin with? Yeah, he doesn't know how to properly swing a sword or block with a shield. You gotta train, practice, fist fight, start with the dregs, and either buy or loot better equipment as you go, and earn the ability to even use higher tier equipment. Oh, you can equip that really nice longsword you just found, but you kind of cheese the game to get it and probably shouldn't have it yet. It requires an 11 in strength, so you're going to do severely reduced damage with it and your swings are going to be clunky and slow until you've reached the appropriate skill level with swords. I again, I know this sort of approach isn't entirely unique, but the game does it in a fairly unique way. And while we're on this subject during my 10 page rant, stats really do matter. It's probably best to pick your playstyle relatively early in the game, and you're rewarded for sticking with it. You can branch out, try different things. The gameplay mechanics allow you to start using a battle axe as opposed to a long sword you've been using the whole time thus far, but you're gonna be clunky with that battle axe at first, and the game does seem to want you to use a long sword or short sword. There are just a lot more skills to learn with them, more combos and perks you can earn as you go. There are definitely still advantages to using a hammer against a heavily armored opponent, or an axe against a lightly armored opponent, but the sword seems to have gotten the most love from the developers. You can't blame them, but it's a little disappointing. The combat is extremely challenging, but equally rewarding. 
learning specific combos and moves, finding the rhythm of combat and your style, which is a huge theme in the game, by the way, uh, redirecting your opponent's swings against them, dodging or blocking with precise timing allows for counterattacks. Uh, different enemies have different habits, strengths, and weaknesses. The ceiling is very high, and the climb to the top of it is a rough one. Don't even get me started on fighting multiple enemies at once. You slip up and suddenly you've taken several hits between the three you're attempting to fight at once, you're bleeding, your armor is battered, you've lost a quarter of your health, and your stamina is reduced by just as much. It's rough. <laughs> but to me at least, this makes it all the more rewarding when you do pull off that fight on your own. You can give yourself quite an advantage by striking first, either in melee or from a distance with a bow before pulling out your sword. The game encourages you to do that. You may even get an enemy to surrender right away if you put a couple of arrows in them before they can get to you. You can also, in theory, gain quite an advantage by engaging on horseback, but mounted combat is a little disappointing for a game that has you play as a medieval knight, essentially. You certainly can do it, you can engage in mounted combat, but it's very tricky to land a blow while riding, and unless you found yourself a pretty brave horse, uh, there's a decent chance you're gonna get bucked off early in the fight and rushed while you're down. So, combat is really great, until it's really frustrating. <laughs> Uh, I had a bunch of notes. What else is there? Ah, the game does also suffer from the incompatible walk speed thing. You know, when none of your speeds quite match up with the walk speed of the NPC you're walking and talking with. It's not too bad. There is a key to walk as opposed to the default light jog, but it's usually just a little bit faster than the NPC's walk speed. So, eh. The game is also just a little bit buggy, but it seems on first release it was a little more than a little bit buggy, so kudos to them for fixing a lot of that. On my system, every now and then, an NPC's neck won't fill in properly for a moment based on the clothes they're wearing, or an NPC will behave slightly strangely. I'll run into some rubble on the ground that becomes clunky to maneuver around to a slightly higher elevation, but I've experienced zero crashes and nothing game-breaking thus far. Except when I was just playing it earlier today, this isn't in my script, I'm just gonna talk about it. I did, for the first time, fall through the world. It was really weird. Uh, I fell, like, a few hundred feet down the map, but then I just walked forward a little bit, and the game, I suspect, understood what was happening and plopped me back up on proper ground, so... Eh? Oh, and one last note. I, I didn't know where else to mention this because it's just not really what this review slash things to know before you play is about. Deliverance is pretty nice to look at. Well, you've been looking at it most of this video. It's pretty, but nothing incredible. But the setting is mostly just serene wilderness, farms, and castles, all pretty well detailed. So if you've got a beefy computer, you're probably going to like what you see. Okay, final thoughts. Would I recommend Kingdom Come Deliverance? Kinda no. I love it. I think it's engrossing, creative, immersive, it's fun, it's challenging, and meticulous and tedious in all the right ways. But I don't have a single friend that I would urge to buy it, even if it's on sale, which it fairly frequently is. The lack of hand-holding to an extreme, I think, will be annoying to most casual gamers who aren't ready to spend the extra 20 minutes figuring out mechanic X or deciphering where they're even supposed to go for a quest. The mechanics are tedious, they're demanding, and will probably put off somebody who likes games where they're the main character and they can take on waves of bad guys. This just isn't that kind of game. Constantly managing what you're wearing, for whom you're speaking with, maintaining equipment, feeding yourself, and resting, it could probably be pretty boring for many. The game grants you opportunities to take perks to tone down a lot of this, but uh, by the time you're able to get most of them, you're probably already invested in the game. Except for sleeping. You get a perk to need way less sleep really early on. Also, the save mechanic is just a little on the unforgiving side, and I could feel that being an instant turnoff for a lot of people. So I stand by what I said at the beginning of this video. I'm going to seal up this love letter for a game I just can't really recommend to most people. It's an S-tier game for a very specific kind of person.
If what I've described in this video sounds at least sort of fun to you, or if you're like me, the kind of gamer who likes to sit and game for a couple hours at a time, immersing yourself and escaping the real world for a bit in a compelling and challenging roleplay driven story where you're the main character, but not the protagonist, I'd strongly recommend you give it a proper shot. Especially for only 30 US dollars, which is the current non-sale price at the time I'm recording this. But for most, I just don't feel like it's widely appealing. And with that, I am going to get back to playing because I am still not done with this game. So hopefully I will see you in the next video.